In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to clone a repo that has Python files in it and how to then make changes in different editors and stage them, commit them, and push them back to GitLab so that continuous integration can check if the code passes all the tests. So this is a repo that I just created for you. It's just a little extension of the case zero demo uh, case that you worked on. And as you can see, it has a Python file as part of it. So it also has a Python test built in. So let's start by cloning that as usual. So I'm just going to get the git at information, copy that into the clipboard. And now I can do this cloning anywhere I like, but I'm going to do it through RStudio because that's what I'm most familiar with here. And it really doesn't matter. I could do git clone and then put in that git at information. I could do it anywhere I like. But let me just show you through git gadget. So I've just pasted in the git at information. It's going to be cloned into the git directory as usual, and then it's going to open up after I clone it into our studio. So it says it's busy. Again, that's not a problem. We just, it's going to shut down git gadget as it refreshes and opens up the new project. And here we go. Here are the files that we're interested in. This is the R file. This is the Python file. So this is such a simple problem that I don't actually have to do anything with any other editor. I could literally just make the changes that I need to even the Python file in our studio, right? And save that. And now I've saved it, and you'll see if I go to the Git tab that there's my, my, my changes to the Python file. So let me just show you what that looks like. Here we go. These are the changes that I've made. And now I can go ahead and stage and commit as usual, right? Like exactly the same as we've done for all the other cases. However, I want to show you some alternative options as well because there was interest in that. So I'm just going to undo the changes that I made. And you'll see that now there's no changes listed in the Git tab. Right? So if I push now, nothing's going to happen because I haven't made any changes or I've just reverted, just by editing, I've reverted the changes that I made. So how would I do this in other applications? So for example, in JupyterLab. Well, in JupyterLab, I can just open up the files that I want. So I just cloned. Right? And so here is my directory, home git rsm mgt dash pi at the end. So I can go find that directory. So here I am in uh, JupyterLab. I can go to the git directory and I can choose the directory that I just cloned. So here again is my Python file. I can go ahead and open that in the text editor. You note that I cannot currently make any edits to this because I need a console, a Python console, to, to run this code in. So if I right-click inside the code-template.py file and click on Create Code Editor, here's my Python, and now I can go ahead and execute lines by getting on that line and pressing Shift and Enter, and now my code is going to be executed. And I can make changes and execute those changes, and I can go ahead and save those as well. So just File, and Control S again as usual. So what would you expect to see now if I went back to the RStudio Git tab and check if there's any changes to files? Of course, I would see some because I just made a change here in the JupyterLab Python editor. And so if I go back, here's the Git tab, and there we go, exactly the same changes. So I can just use again RStudio to commit and push these changes, or I could use the Git integration that's part of JupyterLab. So if I click here on Git, and here I see that there's one change, I can click on this little icon. It'll show me what the change is that was made. So this was the old version. I've just uncommented this. I can go ahead and click on the little plus. That will stage it. Stage it meaning this is ready to commit. And then I can go ahead and commit, I can put in my message. So let's put in a summary. Um, fixed code. That was easy. I'm just providing some information. I could go ahead and click, click here on the commit button and then use this button, push committed changes up to GitLab. And there the continuous integration would run and run my tests. So again, it's, it's very, very similar to Git Gadget. 
uh, in terms of the, the in our studio in terms of pushing and pulling information. If I want to pull something, I just hover over this little icon, it'll pull changes. So the last one I wanted to show you is I'm not going to do this here. I, I'll use VS Code to make edits and push changes to the Python file. Then again, I will use our studio to do the final pushes after changes to the R file. All right. So I want to open up VS Code. So let me, didn't mean to do that. I'll just close this and I'll open up VS Code. Again, I'm going to need to go to the repo that I'm working on. And so the way I'll do that is by clicking on Open Folder and choosing Git. And then, oh, this needs to reload. Open Folder, Git, and let's scroll down until we find it. Here it is. And enter. OK, so now I am in something very similar to an RStudio project. I'm just focused on this RSM MGT K0-Py uh, folder. And so I've already made some changes to the Python file. So I can open up this Python document and make some more changes. Here we go. I'm going to save those with Control S. And let's see, I could also make changes to the R file here directly, because it's just an editor, it's just text files. So I go ahead and save those. And again, I could at this point go back to our studio and check out my changed files. Select to stage, hit commit, fixed it all, commit and push. That would be all there is to it. And again, it really doesn't matter if it's Python or R. Now let me show you how you would do it in VS Code. So in VS Code, that the, has a bunch of uh, extensions installed uh, that you will get once you run the setup command that I've referred to several times from a terminal in JupyterLab. So by that, I mean the following. So in a launcher, I can open up a terminal. And I can run the setup command. If I press Enter now, it's going to ensure that all these extensions for VS Code are available. I've already done that. So here, I've edited my files. And now you notice here this little icon. This is actually a Git icon. If I click on that, it'll say that there are two files that have been changed. And in fact, I, I staged them inside of uh, our studio. I staged them. And so they're already staged in VS Code as well. But this is just Git underneath, underneath that we're accessing. So here are the files. You can again see the changes that have been made relative to the original. I want to commit these, so I'm going to stage them first, both of these changes, and then I'm going to say fixed it's all, right, so just like before. And now I can go ahead and click on this little kebab menu here, and it will say, sorry, I have to commit this first, so I can go ahead and hit commit all, that will commit the changes, and now I need to push update those changes back to the GitLab server. So I'll hit push. You see the little blue bar is running here. And after that's finished running, we'll be all set. So let me just double check that that's indeed true. I'm going to go back to GitLab. And I'll hit a refresh. And let's see. Right. And so here, if I clicked on commits, Here's my commit and my push that I've just done. It says fixed it all. I can see what I changed. I made some changes to the R file. I made some changes to the Python file. And if I go back one, you saw that GitLab integration was running and it's already finished. Right? So here it fixed it all. It's already a nice, nice green checkbox. I can click on that again. And here. And it'll show me all the information about what happened. So it just ran through some R tests. It ran through them Python tests, and everything was successful. So we're all set. Okay. So again, uh, it really doesn't matter what editor you do this in. There is, there is Git integration as part of JupyterLab, where you can make changes. Uh, there is Git integration inside of VS Code, 
where you can uh, show changes and commit them and push them, or you can just do it through our studio. It really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that our studio is really convenient for editing and submitting and testing our code, whereas JupyterLab is better for editing and submitting Python code. And I would argue that maybe VS code is even a little better than that. Right, so let me just show you the Python file here. Right, so I can go ahead and edit this Python file. And if I press Shift Enter, it'll open up a Python interactive terminal and it will start running my Python code. Okay, I hope that gives you the information you need. If you have any questions about this, please post them to Piazza.